In many respects, Stephanie McMahon has been unbelievably lucky. But money isn't everything, and the daughter of former WWE head Vince McMahon has certainly seen some hardships. Stephanie was born on September 24, 1976 in Hartford, Connecticut, the second of Vince and Linda McMahon's two children. Older brother Shane is nearly seven years her senior. After graduating from Boston University in 1998, Stephanie officially began her WWE career as an account executive. But she had done plenty for the company before that, even appearing in WWE in merchandise catalogs, modeling different types of kids' apparel when she was as young as 13 years old. Actually, I've worked for the company since I was about 12. I was a receptionist, <laughs> actually, for about two years. The same year she started as an account executive, Stephanie began having an on-screen presence in WWE. In her first appearance, Stone Cold Steve Austin passed her by, asking if she'd seen his then-adversary, The Undertaker. Soon after, she became an integral part of their rivalry. By the following year, she had married Triple H in storyline and kick-started the McMahon-Helmsley era as an on-screen authority figure. Stephanie and Paul Triple H Levesque wouldn't say I do for real until 2003. The couple shares three daughters. In her time with WWE, Stephanie served as creative director, chief brand officer, and most recently co-chief executive officer and chairwoman. Given that she's the daughter of a widely known public figure, Stephanie McMahon's romantic liaisons, real or not, have long been fair game for rumor mongers. Andrew Test Martin was Stephanie's on-screen boyfriend prior to the onset of the McMahon-Helmsley era. In the time leading up to Test and Stephanie's planned wedding, the couple played their parts well enough to lead plenty of fans to speculate about actual chemistry between the two. In reality, Stephanie had already begun dating Triple H, so when he got involved in the television love triangle in a controversial drive through wedding angle, there was definitely some blurring of reality. Add to that the real-life drama that is whether or not Triple H was still dating China when he and McMahon got together, and things get even muddier. Wilder than all that is the long-standing rumor that a much younger Stephanie once had a romantic relationship of some kind with macho man Randy Savage. Savage left the WWE never to return in 1994. If you do the math then, this would have had to have happened when Stephanie was a teenager. That alone is enough to feed an urban legend, which is all the rumor appears to be. But on his Storytime podcast, retired wrestler and manager Dutch Mantel stated that the rumor was more or less accepted as fact in the locker room. It was repeated over and over and over. Can I say it was true? No, I can't say it was true. On June 25, 2007, upon learning of the news of the deaths of Chris Benoit, his wife Nancy, and their son Daniel, WWE canceled its original plans for Raw, instead airing a tribute show with taped memorials from many of his fellow performers. Only very late in that broadcast did the company learn of the morbid details that Benoit had committed a double murder-suicide. Stephanie McMahon was one of the many who paid tribute to Benoit on the show. She called him an amazing wrestler, adding that he was passionate about family. She broke down when reminiscing about how much he loved his children, recalling their many visits over the years to WWE events. This, of course, is incredibly difficult to watch now, knowing the full details of what transpired at Benoit's Fayetteville, Georgia home on that fateful weekend. In the following days, WWE aired statements prior to episodes of ECW and SmackDown, denouncing the prior celebration and instead dedicating those shows to everyone affected by the incident. The emotional roller coaster that anyone who knew the Benoit family went through over the course of the days and weeks after Chris Benoit's horrific crimes is almost beyond comprehension. From the immediate grief that comes with an unexpected loss, to confusion and denial as details emerged, to the sheer anger over what Benoit had done, all while still processing the profound sadness of it all. Stephanie obviously wasn't the only one to experience it, but she was certainly among them. If you were watching WWE between 2012 and 2014, young Connor the Crusher Mahalik almost certainly touched your heart. Diagnosed with terminal brain cancer at age 3, Connor underwent multiple surgeries and several rounds of chemotherapy and had to relearn how to walk and talk. In October 2012, with the help of his parents, Connor posted a video to YouTube asking to meet then WWE superstar Daniel Bryan. The post went viral, and two months later, his wish came true. He met Bryan and many other WWE superstars on several occasions thereafter, including having a match complete with ring entrance and WWE personnel surrounding the ring to watch prior to an episode of Raw in which the Crusher pinned Triple H. The heartwarming moment was replayed on WWE television time and again. 
In April 2014, Connor got the chance to sit ringside at WrestleMania 30 to watch his hero Daniel Bryan win the WWE World Heavyweight Championship. He died less than three weeks later at just eight years old. A few months later, Stephanie McMahon, along with Triple H, founded Connor's Cure, a nonprofit charity for pediatric cancer research in his memory. And I think WWE, through our incredible voice and all of our fans, we have the ability to tell Connor's story. In 2015, Connor was posthumously honored with the first ever Warrior Award, presented as part of that year's Hall of Fame class. Following Mahalik's death, Stephanie wrote a heartfelt editorial for the Huffington Post titled An Angel on Earth. She detailed the time she first met Connor when he explained his patented chokeout hug. She said he learned from his father that his time was severely limited, and they all worked together to craft the plan to get him to WrestleMania 30 if he could just hang on long enough, which doctors did not expect him to do. Stephanie closed with the following, I believe everything happens for a reason. I feel humbled and privileged that Connor somehow chose WWE to spread his message through our vast audience. Connor's message is clear and simple. Life is all about love. Be grateful for that love every day and give it unconditionally to others. And be sure to give those closest to you a big choke-out hug. Stephanie McMahon and her husband, Paul Triple H. Levesque, are undoubtedly a power couple and have been ever since they linked up. But even a power couple can feel awfully powerless when health problems arise. In September 2021, WWE revealed that Levesque had suffered a cardiac event and had to undergo a corrective procedure at Yale New Haven Hospital. The only other clear details at the time were that the event was caused by a genetic issue and that he was expected to make a full recovery. Months later, Stephanie told Mail Sports Alex McCarthy that her husband was doing great, but not much else. In March 2022, in the weeks leading up to WrestleMania 38, Levesque appeared on ESPN's first take and provided a much deeper look into just how grave things got for him before his surgery. Ejection fraction is a percentage-based measurement of the total amount of blood the heart is pumping with each beat. Levesque explained that 55 to 65 percent is in the normal range of ejection fraction. Um, I was at 30. Mm. By the time he reached the emergency room, his ejection fraction was down to 22 percent, then 12. You know, I was in heart failure. Wow. Bad. Levesque said he was at the one-yard line of where you don't want to be and doubted whether he could survive to continue to raise his and Stephanie's three daughters. He said, There's moments in there when you think, is this it? Do you wake up from this? That's tough to swallow and makes you think. Thankfully, doctors were able to stabilize Levesque and get him back to living a healthy life, although there was no chance of him ever getting in the ring to compete again. In May 2022, Stephanie announced on X, formerly known as Twitter, that she would be taking a leave of absence from most of her responsibilities at WWE, which she called a lifelong legacy. She said she was looking forward to returning after taking appropriate time to focus on her family, given that just eight months earlier she was dangerously close to losing her husband and the father of her three children, focusing on her family for an indefinite period of time made perfect sense. But looking back on all that happened soon after, one might conclude that other factors were at play as well. Less than a month after Stephanie began her leave of absence, her father Vince McMahon announced he would step down as WWE CEO and chairman. By July 2022, he declared on his own X account that he was retiring, writing, At 77, time for me to retire. Thank you, WWE Universe. Vince's announcements coincided with Wall Street Journal reports about, and an internal WWE investigation into, a $3 million settlement paid to a former employee with whom Vince allegedly had an affair. It would certainly be plausible to think that, if she knew the reports were coming, Stephanie may have wanted to step back while she could, to spend plenty of time with her family while she prepared for what would come next. And what came next was her appointment as interim chairwoman and co-CEO. She wrote on X, I love WWE and all it continues to do to entertain billions around the world. She pledged to assume the roles until the conclusion of the investigation into the allegations, seemingly in an effort to ensure as smooth a transition as possible. It was anything but. Vince McMahon's retirement was short, not even six months. Still the majority shareholder in the company, he reinstated himself on the WWE Board of Directors in January 2023. His stated goal was to oversee a sale of WWE, which ultimately resulted in the company's September 2023 merger with UFC to form TKO Holdings Group. 
Less than a week after Vince's January return, Stephanie resigned from her positions in the company. She announced the move on X, invoking the WWE tagline, Then, Now, Forever, Together. Stephanie said it was a privilege to serve as co-CEO and chairwoman, expressing pride in leading the company and bestowing praise upon the leadership team. She specifically singled out Nick Khan, who was her co-CEO, and who became singular CEO. Stephanie added, our founder, Vince McMahon, has returned as executive chair and is leading an exciting process regarding strategic alternatives. Stephanie wrote that she left because the company was in such a strong position with Vince in place, Khan as CEO and Levesque as chief content officer, that she was no longer needed. Of course, given the timing, many observers wondered about whether this was Stephanie's real motive for leaving. And as more came out about her father's behavior, more questions arose. In January 2024, former WWE employee Janelle Grant filed a lawsuit in which Vince McMahon, former WWE head of talent relations John Laurinaitis, and WWE itself were among those named as defendants. The suit alleges sexual assault and trafficking, among other things, during Grant's tenure in the company. The explicit details of the suit have drawn reactions from across the wrestling world, but to date, Stephanie has yet to publicly comment on the matter. Her name has been brought up over a related issue, though. Kara Papilla, who claimed to be a friend of the late former WWE wrestler Ashley Massaro, contended in an interview on Banfield that Vince used Stephanie as a go-between. After Massaro was reportedly assaulted in 2006 at a WWE show on a military base in Kuwait. Vince had his daughter, Stephanie McMahon? take his place because she was a female, a woman, and it, he, to make Ashley comfortable. And Papilla said Massaro then walked into a boardroom meeting where she was on her own and was threatened into silence. Recently released statements from Massaro accuse Vince of preying on her and other women who wrestled for WWE. However, Massaro's daughter, who has advocated that those horrible things did happen to her mother, has stated that Papilla is trying to take advantage of these interviews in order to be in the spotlight. Before the release of the Banfield interview, former WCW president, one-time McMahon family adversary, and later WWE employee Eric Bischoff expressed sympathy for Stephanie, her mother Linda, and her brother Shane in the wake of the accusations against Vince. Bischoff said on his 83 Weeks podcast, These are people that I've met and have worked with, and I've seen how they've treated others, and they're having to bear this as well. If you or anyone you know has been a victim of sexual assault, help is available. Visit the Rape, Abuse, and Incest National Network website or contact Rain's National Helpline at 1-800-656-HOPE-4673.